Joining us now is P. Chidambaram, Congress MP and former Finance Minister of the country. Thank you very much for speaking to NDTV, sir. Uh, so the interim budget does not contain any SOPs for sections of voters. Does this signify the present government's confidence about returning to power? I don't think the interim budget has anything to do with returning to power. They are calculating return to power on several other issues which I do not wish to elaborate now. The interim budget according to them is a holding operation but even a holding operation must acknowledge and recognize the problems faced by the people. I am thoroughly disappointed because the interim budget at least the speech of the Honorable Finance Minister does not even acknowledge issues like rampant unemployment, high food inflation, the suffering of farmers, the suffering of women. Nothing is acknowledged. So I am thoroughly disappointed. So the Finance Minister has also said that revised fiscal deficit for this year would be 5.8% and that the government will continue on the path of fiscal consolidation and for 2024-25 it will come down to 5.1%. Do you think the government is doing enough to bring down fiscal deficit? They are making an effort to control the fiscal deficit. I accept it. But how has this fiscal deficit been controlled? It has been controlled by reduced capital expenditure at the state level by 50,000 crore, number one. Number two, the fiscal deficit has been reduced or at least the reduced number is being shown by cutting major allocations to key health sectors. Look at the allocation in the revised budget for 23-24 and the budget estimate for 24-25. There has been a cut in the allocation. But the government has also said that it has increased capital expenditure by 11%, uh, which re-emphasizes its focus on infrastructure push that many would say is good for the country. Central government's capital expenditure is mainly on railways and roads. Now, roads, of course, are used by everybody. Uh, it doesn't make a distinction between uh, poor and rich. But the railway, the major allocations are for higher priced, high sounding trains like Vande Bharat and uh, the Namo Bharat and the Tejas. At the cost of ordinary trains, uh, second class unreserved bogies and compartments which are used for the poor. There is documented evidence that at the cost of the trains which are used for the poor, they are spending massive amounts of money for trains which are largely used by the middle class and the upper middle class. The government also made a very important announcement today that it plans to release a white paper, a paper on the alleged mismanagement of the economy prior to 2014. And it says that it, this is aimed at learning from past mistakes. How do you see this move? If the next government happens to be a non-BJP government, they can also uh, announce that we will publish a white paper. The question is who is writing, writing the white paper? <laughs> if the government writes a white paper, we know what the outcome will be. It will be like the 63-page mini economic survey singing one's praises. Let the independent body, neither associated with the political party, not part of the government today, let an independent group of people write a white paper. But I don't think the finance minister will allow an independent group of international experts to write a paper. Mr. Chidambaram, one of the good things in, in the interim budget that was announced today is also the government's emphasis on increasing female labor force participation. There was a lot of talk about uh, women in science and also Lakpati Didis and also increasing sensitivity of employers towards women employ employees. Don't you think that's a welcome sign? Now, which women are you we talking about? If we are talking about women who will uh, sit on the corporate board of directors, if you are 
talking about women who will be high executives in corporates. I welcome that. I have no problem with that. But look at the data that I put out at 5 o'clock today in my press conference. Male casual workers earn 48% more than women casual workers. Male regular workers earn 24% more than women workers. Worker to population ratio for urban women is 21.9% 20, as against 69% for men. Labor force participation rate among urban women is 24% as against 74% for women, for men. Now the finance minister should actually address this disparity, the disparity between working men and working women in the wage, in the labor force participation rate, and in the worker to population ratio. Those are the bulk of the women, nine out of 10 women Working women belong to that category. But she's talking about corporate boards and high executive positions, which I welcome. But that is scraping the surface. That is less than 1% of the working women of this country. Uh, in fact, it will be a, a small fraction of 1%. We are talking about 99% of working women. And the evidence is that the vast majority of them are in unpaid employment unpaid employment in domestic uh, household run businesses, uh, trade, they are in unpaid employment. What about the domestic help workers? They are underpaid. Why doesn't the finance minister say, I will ensure that minimum wage is paid to all domestic help. I will ensure that women in the unorganized sector get the same pay as men working in the unorganized sector. This is a government of the rich, by the rich and for the rich. Naturally, it is focused on corporate directorship, high executive positions and big corporations. I welcome that, but that's scratching the surface. Thank you, Mr. Chidambaram, for joining us on this broadcast.